Hi, everyone. And today we're lucky enough to be joined by Joe Bonington. Joe is a coach and also a very experienced mountaineer uh, and a total font of knowledge when it comes to uh, exercise, nutrition, uh, and also uh, a lot of information around the mind um, and how to maximize the way you think um, for the best outcome, particularly in sort of an adventure context. Um, so, Joe, thank you very much for, for joining us today. It's awesome to be here. <laughs> I did, did I do you justice in the intro? What am I missing? The um, no, no, no. Look, I um, it, it's funny. I actually don't count myself as a mountaineer. Okay. Um, I love adventure per se, but people like my old man are um, highly elite technical mountaineers. Um, I and I'm, you know, I've done my fair share of climbing and mountaineering, but I am not um, a high altitude athlete by any stretch of the imagination. You know, and even the, um, I did a, I was lucky enough to do an unclimbed peak a number of years ago, and wow. uh, so I did an unclimbed peak in the in the Himalayas. Oh, yeah. But you know, it was uh, it was kind of cheating because I, you know, I did it with my dad, one of the most experienced mountaineers in the world, and I mm. I, I was the second, and he led. Okay. Um, and um but i still see myself i'm very experienced in the mountains um and in adventure and adventure scenarios in general i'm just a, a lover of high places i just grew up around those places and mm -hmm. i'm a lover of high places and expeditions and and how we can challenge ourselves physically and mentally in different ways and then how we can actually use those experiences in awesome places to to help us grow love it i'm a, a lover of low places i went to altitude once i climbed mount kenya in kenya um and i got such bad altitude sickness like i got to the top and then i was just like i need to go down now and i was basically running down the mountain um yeah and then i had fluid in my lungs and i had to go to a hospital in nairobi i just I was not cut out for it. But look, that, that, that was, I mean, that, that was one, one experience. And we, we've got to be careful like, with all these things. Where we, yeah. It's the same with, uh, it's the same with, with kids. You know, if you have a kid, if, if he, if he ends up falling off his tricycle, you can say, Oh, shit, don't go, don't go on that trike again. The, um, you know, we, we won't learn and grow. So yeah, at you, some point, point. you should go back, <laughs> you know, and it's, yeah, um, I probably would do it again. Actually, we don't, yeah, and we, we don't have to go to altitude to have amazing adventures. I mean, yeah. my, it's funny, everybody expects my bucket lists to all be at altitude. And I do, I have, a, I have an affinity and a closeness to Nepal. I lead people on a lot of treks and I lead people into remote places. Um, I just tend not to take them uh, up to the top. I'll help them plan for the top, but um, I don't take them up to the top. So I, um, but... You know, my my big bucket list goal is to actually take a pack horse and a camel across the top end. <laughs> what know, are, are we are we so, talking like cans to broom or what, what? What are we talking? Yeah, yeah, just right right the way across the top through. Wow, you know, just um, just okay. follow the old stock routes and um, you know spend a good few months doing it. Um, you know, go from station to station. And um, yeah, just with uh, with a pack horse and a, you know may maybe a dog if I pick one up along the way. Yeah. Oh, that'd be amazing. Well, I think yes. that I think that leads well. well. I think that uh, transitions us well into the world of carnivore potentially. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because a, I, I think sort of segue. I think uh, I think being fat fueled on that and uh, also being able to fast. <laughs> Fasting might be crucial. Yeah, uh, would, would be pretty. Yeah. So, uh, Joe, I want to start with a very general question. W what are some of your thoughts about nutrition? Um, I've always been interested in nutrition. I am. Um, uh, so, for a start, I come from a family where my family members were interested in nutrition for different reasons. So. My dad's always had a, a very healthy appetite. We were raised in England in the 70s and 80s. And, um, you know, when uh, the only foreign food was kind of your, your local curry house and, uh, and a local Chinese 
Mm. Um, and and that's it. But I had this dad who spent all his time in India, Nepal, uh, et cetera, and was bringing back all these uh, different uh. ways you wanted to, to eat, et cetera. Um, um, and who actually had spent six months uh, living with uh, living with the Inuits as part of a project for um, uh, for the uh, Telegraph magazine, uh, which is very interesting. Um, so, uh, but then on the other hand, I had a mum who was very very interested in nutrition um, uh, uh, from a vegetarian point of view. So she'd been uh, uh, basically a lifelong vegetarian. She was a, a um, she had uh, been, you know, raised during the times of rationing and all that kind of stuff after the war. Mm -hmm. uh, her dad forcing her to eat stuff she didn't want to eat, and it kind of turned her the other way. Um, and then she went down exploring that plant-based uh, route. She was always kind of semi-pescatarian, but with uh, leaning heavily towards uh, plant-based uh, sure. diets. And she got more and more... Uh, neurotic about that as she got older um whereas me and my dad both healthy uh loved our meat um but the majority of our food at home was actually vegetarian um but we just you know splashed out on steaks at every chance we got um and um but my i have been interested in nutrition um since the day dot i left school early i left school at 16 and I, I went straight into catering college um and spent two years at that and i was working in kitchens um worked as a breakfast chef uh worked in a whole food restaurant um and all of that and then uh, after a segue into the music industry for a number of years that we won't go into um i then got into the fitness industry in which i've been a part of uh as both uh an snc coach and uh you know i'm qualified in um uh new i've done nutritional courses um you know through uh, precision nutrition i'm a holistic lifestyle coach with the the czech institute etc and then exploring experimenting myself i've always naturally been drawn towards heavier meat-based diets um and uh eating either and also ancestral diets paleolithic style uh, etc and that's what i've always tended to play around with and kind of messed around with that and and keto um until i heard about carnival which to be honest was very very recently um I'm trying to think who was the first person it was only a couple of years ago that i actually heard that there was quite a strong movement in people eating a fully carnival carnival diet and i was i was you know Oh no, that's that's getting too extreme. Mm. That's you know, it's another it's another off with the extremities, etc. But I uh, I am a bit of a nerd. Um, I read a lot. I research a lot. I read both um, um, general publications and I read a lot of papers as well. Um, and I slowly kind of got drawn more and more this way and then at a point last year um i gave uh carnivore a go for I suppose probably about four or five weeks like pure carnivore. Yeah, um yeah and that was that was after reading um paul saladino's book okay. and so i gave that and then then i relaxed a bit um introduced and went and settled into what most people do a kind of keto carnivore um, kind of way. And then this was when, you know, I was involved with the Real Movement project at the time. Um, it's where I met, met you. Um, and, uh, you know, and so I've been eating mainly, mainly meat-based uh, ruminants um, with, I've never been shy of um, a waffle. So with a fair bit uh, of waffle, probably more than, uh most people uh eating uh, a carnivore diet um and yeah and so i've been eating that keto carnivore lots of avocados chucked in um and as has come up in this conversation you know i am um, 
I do love my spicy food. So I know they're a nightshade, but um, I, uh, I, I'm, you I'm going to enjoy yourself. in my diet of all kinds. Have an air. Sorry? You have to enjoy yourself, man. Yeah, to totally, totally. And I and also other herbs and spices, you know, I utilize, um, I know Saladino uh, rails against uh, turmeric, but um, I include quite a lot of turmeric in my cooking as well. Uh, and also cumin and uh, both uh, fresh coriander as a herb and then also coriander seeds and, uh, and I grind coriander as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. But that, that's where, that's where I see I. But I also, I do feel a bit like Boise on the on the call the other day that I think um, I believe most people should eat this way, um, and I do I do believe that it's uh, or at least for us of a northern northern European. Mm, I think that's I think that's an interesting them. distinction. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's from anybody who's been through, whose ancestry comes from a place that went through a severely long ice, ice age, whilst we were, uh, for the best part of, of whilst we were kind of uh, developing as an early civilization, um, or as civilized as we were compared to what was going on um, down around the, um, was it the Euth Euphrates, where, where was that? Yeah, so the, the source of civilization down um, down near the Nile and, and all that kind of stuff, whilst uh, us guys were ch chucking spears and grunting at each other up um, <laughs> in caves up in uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. We're still kind um, of doing that. And I do, yeah, yeah, exactly. Where, we, where we've just got very, a lot bigger spears, you know, now, now our spears can kill a million people at a time, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I, I do feel that especially, uh, us and others, I, I don't know enough about, um, yeah, uh, I think, I think this, this, this idea can be the... archaeological, archaeological biology. Okay. Yeah. Or, um, so, or yeah, so, so, latitude, so, you know, where, where people, yeah, and investigate, uh, different cultures countries cultures where they've actually originated from before the tectonic plates moved and and where they shifted and and so what food uh, groups they developed on etc i don't know enough to talk knowledgeably about that neither do so i really i'm talking from this yeah from this perspective which is you know of me and my ancestry i feel that you know we we must have been able to do very very well on a very high meat based diet because for a good 30,000 years you know the only thing that could uh get through to any veggies at any time really were were the mammoths and that that we were eating and much like the inuits um who spend uh many months of the or traditionally eating inuits where the only greens they'd get was stuff that was pre-digested pulled out of the stomachs of a seal um you know, I'd say we were the, uh, or out of the stomach of a caribou or an elk, um, we'd be much the same. Yeah, sure. I mean, that instinctively makes sense to me, at, at least at least compared to the sort of standard Australian or standard American diet. You know, you'd think ancestrally we're much more suited to, to eating more meat, less carbohydrates. And uh, people who I've spoken to and my own experience, you know, we, we know it works. Um, we know it works. Yeah. In in, in, in terms, really, yeah. So you get really it. hard getting it across to people. Sorry, I, I mean it's you know I was out at a and what it is seen as being what what I find bizarre is that nowadays because of the way politics have gone and everything that a plant based diet is no longer seen. Uh, and a, a true vegan diet, which used to be seen as an extreme diet, is no longer seen as an extreme diet. It's almost seen mainstream. And eating uh, a meat, heavy meat-based diet is seen as being uh, extreme. I went out to, um, uh, we had a gathering on Sunday, and at that gathering, uh, a lot of close friends of mine, uh, all 
who are interested in health and uh, one of them there is uh, um, a doctor is an anaesthetist his wife is a dietitian um, and oh the, the conversation you know and, and these are experienced and intelligent people and they just could not get past past it you know and I got into the conversation about epidemiology about whether the history of uh, cholesterol and heart disease and you know two and two making five and uh, and all of that and and it really was I was really trying to avoid it becoming me sounding like I was evangelizing which I think is the worst thing that you can do um, uh, or trying to deflect it so I, it didn't seem as extreme mm. but um yeah, it didn't. There was still at the end people. Oh, Joe, just yeah, just be careful. Just be careful. And and, and um, you know, are you, are you going to get your bloods done? And and what is you know, I, I you know, my my father had a um, high cholesterol, and and um, I've gone plant based for five weeks, and I know it's reduced my cholesterol. And I was trying to say, yeah, but but does it matter? Did it yeah, matter? I mean, it it's your cholesterol, yeah. or not? you know, where's where, what do, what do you, where's the proof? Where, how does, um, how, how does that relate to your, where, where, your overall health? I mean, it's, it, it really is total nonsense. Yeah, Unfortunately, yeah. most people won't listen. Um, but, you know, for those people who are a little bit more open-minded um, and are really intent on improving their health, well, you know, this is an option for them um, and this works. So in, in, in terms of what yeah. works, Joe, what's, what's working for you right now? What's working for me right now? Well, tell you what, let's talk about let's talk about the changes that I'm seeing, okay. um, and then I'll talk about what's working for me uh, in the way that I'm approaching my, this these this thirty days uh, that we're doing at the moment. So, for a start, I am I'm a very high energy person. I always have been, and um, I've always been one for getting up really really early. So I get up at four a.m. Uh, every morning uh, or was getting up at 4 a.m. every morning and uh, even on my days off I'd still just end up waking up at that time um, I would uh, not go to uh, I'd, I'd go to bed <clears throat> but I'd still mind racing I'd be up several times during the night um, and all that and very often I'd just if I woke up at three o'clock I'd just end up getting up and uh, and starting work so average um, average hours of sleep, Joe. Okay. How, how many hours per sleep, of sleep per night? Oh, I was getting five to six. I was getting five oh, to six. Yeah, so, so it's not enough. Um, now, no, 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 totally, totally, and um, and that has been consistent. And, I, and I've done, you know, everything. You know, we've got blackout blinds in the room, and uh, and all of this kind of stuff. And and um, anyway, so immediately i so i started this with i've been fasting for quite a long time i've been um doing uh you know a combination of three-day fasts 16 8 and the occasional 24-hour fast um and i hadn't done one for donkeys so i started my the week before your 30-day program officially started mm -hmm. i started that with a three-day fast and then went into a semi-carnivore diet. So it was more heavily meat-based. I basically started cleaning out some of the stuff that had been creeping in. And then by the time, so, and then within seven days, I went total carnivore, um, except for the chilies. Um, and um, yeah, my sleep, um, I am now uh just sleeping straight through till five o'clock um which is just that, that is literally unheard of wow. um i i don't know if i sent did i send you a screen yeah you did that that looked oh. remarkable joe's got this um screenshot showing yeah. his his each night's sleep uh, and you can exactly pinpoint when you started carnival which was about two yeah. was carnival which is about two weeks ago <laughs> then, uh, and we'll so share for that. For those of you that have sleep trackers and that, 
yeah for those of you that have sleep trackers and um uh and apps especially if you've got an apple watch there's an app called auto sleep that's a lot more in depth than uh than the apple app um and i use that and it, it's phenomenal because it's got a traffic like system and if you've got an so apple watch how is really it sure. detecting yeah yeah apple apple watch so uh red for really shit sleep orange for uh average sleep um and uh green for for good sleep and and it's based off four different metrics so it's based off length of sleep quality of sleep which is um uh yeah just a general uh, overall uh combination then depth of sleep um so you're really deep sleep restorative sleep and your also your heart rate dip so how much what percentage your heart rate dips by overnight um and i've basically had green rings uh since then except for one night which was the second night we started the carnivore diet uh, i'm not sure what was going on there but that that one night is the only night that my sleep has been in and it wasn't even in the yellow it was mm. in the amber fantastic um, and, you know, and, I mean, and how, even how do you feel bed, joe it? now that you're getting this better sleep oh absolutely awesome so you know it's it's dangerous so uh the, <laughs> to the trouble is at home I'm, so much I'm energy more annoying to my wife yeah more annoying to the wife and my girls than I normally am yeah. um you know so they everybody thinks i'm mad anyway because i do tend to even even when i was not sleeping well mm -hmm. i leap out of bed I'm, I'm all my energy was in the morning but it wasn't sustained so i'd, I'd be crashing during the day uh etc now i'm not getting that so i'm getting up later my energy is sustained through the day um i'm not getting when i was traditionally when i was doing i've been doing a, a kind of 16 8 diet but it was in actual fact it was 16 7. i wouldn't eat till two o'clock in the afternoon um and often by two, I was absolutely uh, not just hungry. I'd just be, I'd be ravenous. Um, and that's changed yeah. as well. So um, I'm now, I'm more lax about what time I have that first meal, but it, it's never really before one o'clock. Um, and, uh, but even on other days that I go through till three or four, I literally forget you know it's not it's just not an issue at all mm. um i'm feeling a lot more generally satiated um my oh the the other thing i didn't talk okay talking about performance metrics um as well um is my uh performance um my uh steady heart rate on my uh, i'm really focusing on my endurance at the moment um and my uh my sub level heart rate so what we call zone two running which is the op optimal level to run for to, for being lipolytic not destroying your glycogen stores uh etc uh and optimizing uh, that oxidative uh, fat burning process um and being fat adapted my uh improvements of pace uh, at my uh, selected heart rate zone are literally increasing day by day. It's ridiculous. Yeah, awesome. So, um, so that's really, really good as well. Um, and then on top of that as well, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm not as sore uh, as I have been. And generally I'm feeling less inflamed. Um, I've got a history of uh, knee and hip issues. Now I'm actually, you know, and I'm, I'm saying this within this environment, you know, here's me, uh, you know, my background's actually as a strength and uh, conditioning coach. That's what I'm qualified as. I'm not actually qualified as an endurance coach. I'm actually mm -hmm. doing some qualifications around that at the moment, but my background strength and conditioning, and I've been a registered strength and conditioning coach for, uh, what, 15 years now. Um, I don't tell anybody I haven't been doing any strength. <laughs> okay. just, just running and, and so 
Yeah, so I've just been running, which is what I tell everybody not to do. Um, and I should be, uh, I haven't been doing all my ATG stuff that I should be doing at the moment. Um, I've just been running and I thought I'd be pulling up sore, stiff um, and, uh, and immobile. Mm. And I'm not. That's great. Yeah, the, the lower inflammation, I mean, for recovery, it's phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. And, um, you know, so, so anyway, all of, I've got all of that going on. Um, what else has been, what else has been improving? Um, I mean, that's the, that's the main one. Oh, clarity, clarity at work. I've, I've got a lot going on at the moment, but I always do. Ever since you've known me, I've always got, uh, I throw myself into things, mm. but I'm just, I'm feeling in a very, very good place oh, that's uh, great, mentally at the moment. I can't really, you can't really put a figure and you can't. It's harder to, to, it's harder to measure, isn't it? You know, and, it, and it's like, I'm thinking, okay, well, it's, is, it, is it the books that I'm reading at the moment? Is it the, the meditation that I'm doing at the moment? Is, is it, it the better sleep? Um, is it the, uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's combination. This is there's a lot of this stuff is chicken and egg, you yeah. know. So it, it's with the, uh, and it's interesting around the sleep. So so, am I, uh, am I sleeping better because I've been more focused on the uh, on the sleep, uh, and because of that I'm making better food choices, and because of that. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? My blood sugar's more even, et cetera. Yeah. Or is it the other way around? Or, or is, is it, it a combination of the whole yeah. lot? I mean, it, it does seem, for a lot of people, it does seem to start with nutrition. And once they can nail that I, uh, I agree. Nu nutrient dense yeah. diet and their body's getting everything they need, and then, then like, you know, it, it all just flows from there. And you can, you can train better, you can work more efficiently, you can sleep better. Yeah, I think, you know, for me, it's a starting point and, and I'm finding that with more, the more people I speak to, they've experienced the same thing. I, I come from a part of Britain where, you know, we did. I mean, I was, when I was at Catering College, we were cooking up things like cooking up sweetbreads and stuff like that. We were making steak and kidney pie. We were uh, doing as a... Um, uh, when I was, I was doing livers and bacon and um, and stuff like that, and also we, you know, we eat uh, black pudding like there's no tomorrow back home. Yeah. Um, now, whereas over here, where you've got, I mean, you've got some amazing fresh produce, and um, and most of it either gets shipped overseas um, or it's just not. It's just not eaten here because the Australian palate has just gone for this just muscle meat, muscle meat, muscle meat. And that is generational as well, because mm. when I talk to my mother-in-law, who's Australian, and she's from a, uh, you know, just a, 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 a rural um, farming family from up around Mirawar, uh, Hunter Valley and around there. And they, they didn't let anything go to waste when they were kids. But within the, the space of that generation, trying to get my wife to eat, you know, her daughter to eat uh, anything, lamb's brains or, or whatever, mm. the, um, she's not having a bar of it. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I, I wonder if these things will become delicacies maybe in a generation or two. Maybe they'll, you know, it'll become. Yeah. You, know, you, you hear stories about lobsters in the past being kind of like peasant food and like, yeah. you know, in New York, like you know, the, like the poorer people would go into the ocean and get themselves a lobster. Whereas today, you know, there's yeah. nothing. There's nothing more gourmet. There's no bigger sign of luxury, really. It's the same. Yeah, oysters in England. Yeah, so oysters in England, England and Ireland. Uh, when before we polluted the Thames and everything, when they used to grow all the way up the Thames, they were seen as food for the poor. Wow. You know, and, not today. Um, and now and now they're not you know now they're yeah you know and like some of the original irish recipes with uh with oysters actually come from those days and come from those days of of when they were just poor poor people's food so who knows maybe yeah, so, maybe we'll see a shift yeah i mean but we need to because I, I, what i was going to say is 
for anybody who is looking at doing a carnivore diet, the, the whole thing about a carnivore diet is actually getting all the nutrients we need and that an animal can provide all the nutrients that we need. Um, and there's two areas where that uh, happens is one, at least some of the meat that is eaten has to be eaten um, reasonably rare. Um, so we haven't cooked out some of the, uh, you know, the, the vitamins and nutrients that uh, are in it. Not all, so some subs, I love a slow cooker, um, but we do need to, to have a bit of fresh blood on our plate as well. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, there's a lot in that we just have to look at our ancestors. And that if, we, if we're doing a carnivore diet, we're doing it because it's ancestrally correct. So if we're not eating any of the organ meats, well, then we're not getting the stuff. We're, we're missing part of the jigsaw. It's like trying to put together a jigsaw puzzle and somebody's taken out 10 of the pieces and hidden them. Do you know what I mean? And we're, we're never going to get what you're saying, the, yeah. We're never going to get the full picture. We're never going to get the full benefit. We'll get some of the benefit, um, but unless we supplement, Mm. which we want to avoid, which is much better if we can have things naturally, um, then, uh, then we can. So, you know, a lot of people, so for example, pe people won't give stuff uh, a go. Uh, they make a decision about organ meats based on just the thought, you know, um, you know, they just, they, they won't, they won't explore it. Um, or the trouble is as well, they'll go gung-ho, not know how to cook it, how to, uh, how to deal with them well um, and just treat them like any other meat. And then they'll end up with this nasty piece of rubber on their plate uh, that will put them off for life. Yeah, so you mean say that, say that they're not willing to give it a go or they give it a go and they cook it poorly. Yeah, 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 basically. You, they, they need to do, Hard to win. Research. Yeah, exactly. Do, yeah. do the research. What, what is the best way to do it? And it, um, one of the ones that I think is actually a really good entry level for, apart yeah. from so some of the ones which are really common that you see everywhere actually aren't necessarily the best entry level food. So, you know, Kidneys and liver are actually really easy to get hold of. Uh, liver is the best for us. Liver, liver is, is a superfood. That is just phenomenal. And liver is uh, reasonably easy to cook. A lot of people overcook it, but um, it's, it's pretty easy to cook and kind of forms its own gravy. Uh, if you want to add a little bit of spices in there, that, that's great. But um, uh, I yesterday had for lunch, I had sweetbreads. Now, sweetbreads actually come from um glands that are found in the sheep i tend to have sheep's uh, sweetbreads they're the easiest thing to find in australia and they come from glands either uh, I, that are found either side of the heart um and in the neck okay um, and they are awesome they they actually kind of taste chickeny um so they don't have that awfully taste that they don't taste like liver taste and you know how liver and kidney I mean, I love the taste in liver. Uh, liver is liver. incredibly strong in its flavor. Yeah. Very rich. Yeah. But, but, yeah. but you're saying sweetbreads should be an entry point because they're a bit more mild. Yeah, exactly. But people have got the wrong thing. So there's this kind of, um, uh, not, not an urban myth, but misinformation out there. People think that uh, sweetbreads are lamb's testicles and they're, they're not. They're, they're a gland. Okay. They, they come from a gland. Yeah. And so... They've got another name, like sheep's oysters or something, don't they? Yeah, and they're they're, they're absolutely yeah, oysters. Yeah, yeah. so they and those those are those are they're easy to cook, they're easy to prepare, um, they taste, uh, they've got delicate flavour. So you know, if you want to whap some um, uh, some herbs on them, some cumin, some ch mix it with a bit of chili, some black pepper, and some salt, um, fry it off, um, and then you know you're away. Mm. Um, so they're they're a really good entry level one in, and then um, and then also doing stuff like cheating with the with the the liver. So I like a bit of raw liver every now and then. Yeah. And I, I don't I don't chew it when I eat it raw. I love you can swallow it. it. But yeah, yeah. So I, I swallow it. I'll freeze it. Yeah. Freeze like it. Oyster, I guess. 
Yeah. And um, and I'll, I'll often have it with a, a sip of milk as well. That actually help, uh, helps mask the taste and take the taste away. Yep. Um, so most of those organs as well, both the liver and the kidneys, you can reduce the flavor by soaking them in milk uh, overnight. Mm. So if you're not keen on the flavor, just uh, you can do that as well. Yeah. Joe's tips on eating organs. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think like I think you make a really good point. It's like most aren't willing to give it a go. Those that do might not prepare it properly. Um, yeah. So you know, people actually understanding how to prepare it is you know it's going to be a, a huge. It makes it so much easier for them to get into it, give it a go, yeah. and unlock those nutrients because that's the point, right? As as you said earlier, nose to tail is the way that you see kind of a more healthy approach, whereby you're getting all the vitamins and all the and all the nutrients. Um, so you're going to need your organs if, if that's your approach. Right. So thank you so much for that, mate. That was really insightful. Um, great. And I'm so glad you, you're you having these wonderful benefits of, of being on Carnival in the last two weeks. I'm, I'm actually, I'm really, really enjoying it. I am, um, yeah, and I, I, I just, it is, I think that the great thing about going and doing it and going full, hmm. it, it leaves no room. It does, it makes it binary. Oh yeah. Uh, well, that that's just not in the diet. Now I haven't gone full full full, so I'm still allowing myself coffee, black coffee, mm -hmm. and I'm allowing myself um, a herbal tea. Mm -hmm. um, but whereas before I was drinking uh, normal tea, and uh, I would have uh, a non-alcoholic beer of a night and stuff like that, sure. this just cuts it out. So I'm not yeah. having any of those any calories uh in liquid in a liquid form um and um yeah and i just feel i'm feeling great i'm so glad to hear it's awesome yeah it's really really good mate enjoy really enjoying it all right joe well mate, thanks for sharing your experience um and yeah well i'll chat to you in the group fantastic awesome cheers mate okay thanks joe